Hi, I'm Professor Tolga Kaya. I'm the Director of Engineering Programs at Sacred Heart University. Welcome. So uh, what you see here, this is our idea lab, and that's also home for our engineering, engineering programs. So you can see we have uh, the studio area, and we have uh, our idea lab uh, things here, and we will actually give you more, uh, show you more stuff uh, in, the, uh, in the lab. Thank you very much for watching. Pretty soon you will figure out that I'm obsessed with drones. So uh, continuing my, with my obsession, um, I, we have a very interesting uh, autonomous vehicle research studio. So this is for like, drones uh, and also ground robots. You can actually look around and see okay, some of our uh, drones, um, uh, which is one of them is this one, uh, Quanzer. We work with Quanzer. Um, and you see uh, over here we have eight cameras. They basically cameras track the markers here similar to a motion capture lab, but they just track the drones so we can actually work with MATLAB and Simulink and work on machine learning, uh, autonomous uh, operations, um, and also use ground robots. Our ground, ro ground robots uh, actually basically uh, Roomba and uh, Xbox, uh, and then we can con uh, connect uh, a lot of sensors, and we use this system for our classes to teach embedded systems, uh, control, um, and uh, programming uh, at the same time. Thank you. Hi, welcome inside the Idea Lab. You're in place for that we call the studio. Um, here you can come in with your activities and you have uh, some tables you can work on or you can use our computers to start making your designs to use on the machines uh, that I'll show you in a minute. Uh, we also have two meeting rooms that are fully video conference able. So if we work, for example, with a company, then you get to work with them remotely um, on your project. In this area, we have um, everything about soldering and electronics. So I'll show, um, um, Tolka will show you the electronics lab um, in the back, but here this is where we do most of our, our soldering. We also have a Volterra machine or a CNC machine. Those two machines allow you to create your own uh, PCB, printed circuit boards, the same thing that you have in your phone. So we can create custom electronic designs. That's pretty cool. Um, over here, we have uh, two machines called uh, vinyl cutters. Uh, what they do is basically they act like your printer, uh, except that they have this little cutter tool that will cut whatever shape you want out, uh, out of the material. We mostly use vinyl, so you can create your own stickers. Um, and if you keep the outside of the sticker, basically it's a stencil. So now you can put it on something and paint. So it's great for signal edit, um, um, making, making um, uh, labels or, or things like this. There's also some cool uses. You can uh, put some copper tape, for example, and make soft electronics, which is kind of cool. Or you can uh, put some card stock in there and make a pretty mean birthday card. So welcome into a 3D printing lab. Um, here, as you can see, we have a lot of 3D printers. What's really cool about them is uh, we can print pretty much any shape or form and transform it into an object pretty fast. Um, here we have all the printers have in common that they print plastic. Um, you can print different kinds, some is flexible, some is not, but basically the, the idea is simply that we can create very complex items uh, in no time. So if you can see this, this object, for example, uh, everything was printed at once, so this cannot open, and it's pretty impressive. We call this impossible projects because, for example, you couldn't build this any other way besides using 3D printing. So how? Well, it's quite simple. Uh, 3D printers actually, it's kind of a lie, they're not building in 3D at all. What they do is they take a slice out of your object, build that slice first, and then on top of it, builds a second slice, and a third, and a fourth, and so on and so forth. The idea is you build by piling up. That's what's 3D printing. Um, you actually have different technologies. This is called FDM, Fusion Deposit Material. But you also have um, SLA, such as in the wet lab, or other technologies that are completely different but they all have in common that layer system. That's what 3D printing is all about. If you take a look around, you'll see that we have very large machines, such as this, those Stratasys, that are um, industry standards uh, that allow us to make very fine prints. We also have a giant printer called a Gigabot, and we also have uh, a lot of smaller printers that allow you to create those objects pretty easily. Um, and more importantly, a lot of those printers have in common that they were created within a makerspace themselves. So that's kind of cool. So welcome to the wet lab. Uh, in this place, uh, we have two zones. The first zone here is mostly about science. So we have uh, microscopes, and if you take a look around, you'll see uh, that we have um, balances, we have a fume hood, 
which is this gigantic thing here. Um, those will allow us to um, basically work with chemicals and look at the, the small things with the microscopes and so on and so forth. In the second zone, uh, we have more advanced 3D printing. So this is where we're going to find printers such as the X-Rise that allow us to do prints with um, technically color. Um, so we can do any sort of color on those prints uh, that allows us to do something like this. And uh, you don't know this yet, but this is an Easter egg for the president because he loves uh, bow ties. On this side, we have um, a Form 3 uh, from Form Labs. Uh, this is a, an SLA printer. It's called Stereolithography. It's a really nice kind of printer that allows us to do very fine prints, such as this thing. By the way, this is Pi 3.4, uh, 1419, etc. Here, welcome to the Media Lab. So, in this room, we have access to a few interesting technologies, such as this one, uh, which is a 3D scanner. This is actually a measuring device, so what it allows you to do is measure very precisely any 3D shape. That allows us to capture it on the computer and then have a 3D design. So for example, right now we were working with Jack Welch, um, the previous CEO of GE's uh, head, to recreate a bust. So uh, you scan that way, and then you have this shape in your computer. That allows you to use the room I'm going to show you next, which is the 3D printers. Um, but we also have here uh, some advanced printer. If you take a look around here, we have this printer that allows you to uh, print posters and high quality items. And we also have, it's not set up right now, but we also have a VR uh, capability. Here, welcome to the textile lab. So what we have here is a bunch of what looks like regular printers behind you. Um, there are technically sublimation printers that allows you to do something like this. You can create your own t-shirts or your own ca caps or plenty of other things by um, sublimating ink. So what it means is you transform the ink that you print on that paper into a gas using this heat press. The ink becomes a gas, gets trapped inside the fabric of the, of the t-shirt, and that's how you make your, your full color on a uh, t-shirt, and that's pretty cool. The other thing that we have here is a full-on embroidery machine. So what that allows you to do is embroidery on your cap. So for those of you that, that wouldn't know what embroidery is, this is our test shirt, so there's a bunch of them on there. But for example, this is what embroidery is. This is what you're used to seeing more high-end quality uh, items. And we can do it with um, any sort of fabric, any sort of hats, um, and so on and so forth. What's really cool about embroidery too is we have a special kind of uh, thread, it's called conductive thread, that technically can be embedded into fabric to create an electronic circuit. Therefore, you can create something as cool as a t-shirt that warns you if you have a heart attack or something like this, which is really cool in a world where wearables is becoming a thing. This is our breakout room. In this room, basically, it's your room to be able to work quietly on any project that you see fit. Uh, as you can see, the Shoe Innovate that did some really cool design here, it's one of the clubs, um, it's one of the student-run clubs that, uh, on campus. They come here a lot um, and they do a lot of workshops. So basically, if you come and use the space, uh, you'll, or you have a lot of options, including this breakout room, the, the meeting rooms over there, or the studio area, depending on what you're working on. Welcome to the machine shop. This is where most of machines are, actually. Um, so you'll see a lot of different things around me, and, and that's a little overwhelming, but I'm going to walk you through them. So over here, we have what's called a water jet cutter. This machine, what it allows you to do is basically cut with water uh, through pretty much anything. So you can do anything from titanium to wood to glass to a lot of different materials. What's really cool, cool about it is because it only uses water and does not have any sort of tooling, um, you can make very complicated shapes um, pretty easily. So you can make something like this, or you can cut some very interesting materials. This, for example, is rock. It's really just a rock from the beach. So we cut it into a necklace for, um, for one of our students, which is kind of cool. Another thing that you can see around us is uh, this machine here. This is a, a vacuum former. What it allows you to do is take any shape, put it in the machine, and in a matter of seconds, basically press that shape against the hot plastic and vacuum press it so that it keeps the shape. What that allows you to do is basically create a piece that looks like the way you, the part that you want to look like, but also create a mold if you use the inside of that, that, that piece. Um, in there, you could 
pour anything from silicone, chocolate, candles, soap, whatever you want. Uh, literally, you can make pretty much anything with this, which is pretty exciting. We also have, on this other side, um, that complete side over there is dedicated to woodworking. So we have the manual um, aspect with a, with a wood shop, really, um, with a manual lathe, the miter saw, and all those regular tools. But we also have this very large machine, the blue machine that you see in the back. That machine, what it does is it's a CNC router that allows you to cut the pieces of material with um, a bit uh, in a similar fashion that a, a, a drill would do. Um, except that this allows you to create computer controlled um, versions that, that, that permits to create anything from furniture. So for example, if you look at this, this was created by one of our students. That very large piece of furniture around here is created by a student, was created by a student as well. So um, this is a pretty exciting machine to work with. Uh, the other thing that we can do with it is cut uh, some non-first non metals, foams, plastics, you name it. In this side, we have the large uh, uh, red machines are metal working machines. They are CNC mills and CNC lathe. That allows you to create uh, a very strong hard metal mach uh, pieces, uh, machined pieces, sorry. Um, and that will allow you to create uh, complex machines and uh, you know where um, um, parts that need to resist wear those kinds of things. In here, uh, we have also laser cutters. We have uh, we're pretty fortunate. We have two massive laser cutters. What they allow you to do is to cut through pretty much any materials with a laser. Um, you can make something as complex as this pretty easily. All you do, and that's something you need to understand about the whole lab, is you have to have a design on the computer and then the machine is going to take care of the cutting for you. It's really interesting because it doesn't mean that you need to be good at doing it yourself. The skill is between the machine and the computer. All you need to provide is a design. So you have two choices. You can either create yourself or you can download it. Most people don't realize this, but you can download the table and nowadays on the internet. It's pretty easy actually to do. So usually when someone uses the Makerspace, what they do is um, they go online, find something similar to what they want to do, and then they download it, change it, tweak it to exactly what they want or need, and then they use the machine to make it, which is pretty cool. Hi, so right now uh, you are in our electronics lab. So the, this is where we actually are moving all our things here uh, to actually use the, the lecture. You can lecture here if you want to, but we all have uh, the equipment here and we teach all uh, our engineering classes especially hands-on classes, pretty much most of them here. So you can see all our components are here. So we are also sorting some of them here. Um, and uh, equipment are all uh, industry standard equipment. Uh, so you can use these and then not just for classes, but also for projects. Students come in and out uh, all the time uh, to use the components. Uh, so we're uh, pretty lucky have, uh, to have this uh, space uh, for all our engineering students. Hi everyone, my name is Professor Baldi and I'm one of the engineering professors here at Sacred Heart. And as you have known, we're in the electronics lab. And part of the things that we do in the electronics lab is that I always assign projects for students to do. So one of the projects that students have done in our um, circuits and system class is that they could build their own PCB board. Right, so in doing this, they could make their own PCB printed board, have a functioning equipment that can be operated and work. And the other thing that they are doing in our class, for my embedded system class, is that they're working, a student is working with this car kit in which they are trying to do a tag um, game. So in this um, game, the, as you know, the car will like try to find the other two cars and try to do a tag and then try to eliminate a player. And these are just some of the fun activity stuff that we'll be doing in our, for projects in our classes. Thank you.